Do you need help making ends meet during the COVID-19 crisis? The City of San Antonio's new Emergency Housing Assistance Program provides assistance to pay for rent, mortgage, utilities, and internet access. As part of the assistance package, cash is available to pay for groceries, medicine, and fuel. To see if you qualify, visit www.sanantonio.gov slash emergency housing assistance or call 311. We are still here. The Church of God in Christ Publishing House is still here, fulfilling our mission of Psalm 6811 by creating, publishing, and distributing the highest quality Christian resources that equip God's people with power for living. We are still committed to getting the word out. We are still supporting leaders, churches, and the saints. We are still here supporting you. We all count in the 2020 Census. The Census helped bring essential federal funding to our community. This funding impacts health care, public safety, education, and transportation. Visit my2020census.gov and get counted now. Do you need help making ends meet during the COVID-19 crisis? The City of San Antonio's new Emergency Housing Assistance Program provides assistance to pay for rent, mortgage, utilities, and internet access. As part of the assistance package, cash is available to pay for groceries, medicine, and fuel. To see if you qualify, visit www.sanantonio.gov slash emergency housing assistance or call 311. We are still here. The Church of God in Christ Publishing House is still here, fulfilling our mission of Psalm 6811 by creating, publishing, and distributing the highest quality Christian resources that equip God's people with power for living. We are still committed to getting the word out. We are still supporting leaders, churches, and the saints. We are still here supporting you. We all count in the 2020 Census. The Census helped bring essential federal funding to our community. This funding impacts health care, public safety, education, and transportation. Visit my2020census.gov and get counted now.
here way God operates, and you got to watch this. Praise God. Have you ever noticed that the church becomes apathetic when that some people keep coming up to get prayer and to get saved and to repent? And, and, and the church is so apathetic that they say, well, you know, they was up last week, and we prayed for them. And then the next week, we prayed for them. Child, I'm getting tired. Hello, said, we just about to get out, and here they come. <laughs> Hello. Y'all know I'm right. Yeah, they, they're ready for the benediction, and somebody comes up. We, we open the doors of the church, and, and you say, ain't nobody coming. Thank God. And all of a sudden, they start coming. Oh, God, we, we're going to be here for another hour. You know, I know the pastor. Pray God. He's going to pray with him. Hello, am I in here? I, 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 I wish they'd have just shut up. They can come next week. They've been coming every week. I don't believe I have a witness. I wish I had a witness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, we got to, we got to realize, pray God, people tear it for you. People prayed for you. And sometimes they had to pray over and over and over again. And you ought not hold nobody, but give everybody a chance. I'm so glad that God gave me a chance. It looked like it was over for me, but God gave me a chance. I came over and over again, but he did not turn me away. And thank God I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved for I am his and he is mine. Say it. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Praise Cathedral's live broadcast. We're so glad you're here today. And on behalf of Bishop Essie Agohart and all the sweet saints here at Praise Cathedral, we'd like to welcome you in. Today you're in for a treat. You're in for a time like you've never had before. The Lord is going to meet us here and greet us here only uh, in your absence. However, you could you stay tuned and the Lord has a great word for you. Uh, just before we get started, I would like for you, please, if you would, repeat after me uh, the, the 31st Psalms, the first six verses. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Right now, saints, our prayer lines are open and you can reach us by calling 210-223-5263. Someone is standing by. Today, you're going to hear an inspired word from my friend and yours, the elder, Christopher Gonzalez. But just before he comes, we have a musical treat for you entitled, We Worship You, from our Praise Cathedral Ensemble and then you'll be in the hands of our speaker. Hallelujah, God Almighty, Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. God Almighty, Lord of glory, 
glory. Oh, we worship you. Oh, oh, we worship you. Oh, 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 we worship you. Come on, praise team. God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of glory. No! 
praising only you. the Lord Church. I am Elder Gonzalez and I counted it a privilege to be before you this morning. Praise the Lord for our pastor and for his overseeing of this great congregation. God bless him. May continue his face continue to shine upon him. If you knew, praise the Lord, the word of God that says that we can witness to the truth of the fact that we see the scripture in a more different light where it brings a special meaning to us and that is where David said in the 122nd Psalm, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is unfortunate that even though we can't be together in one place, however, we can be together in the name of Jesus. It's a joy that we can stand on God's word and rejoice in the fulfillment of that word because he encourages us to fulfill it and encourages us to believe where he says that he is in the midst of us wherever we gather, whether it's in cyberspace, whether it's in one place, whether it's in your home or my home, whether I be in this sanctuary or you be in your place of abode, we are yet in the presence of the Lord and we are gathered here in the name of Jesus. Therefore, the power of God is among us to work both the will and to do of God of his good pleasure. And for that, we can give God the praise and give God the thanks for the forethought and for the power that he's placed in his word and in his spirit. We rejoice in that because we believe. The significance of God being in the midst of us brings confidence that his hand and his command is in every situation of ours, that God is in control. If God is in the midst, we can rest assured that God has things under his command. Psalm 46 and 5 says, God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, us, his people, and that right early. At that point, that's a good time where we can put our hands together and make a sound unto the Lord and give him the praise and exalt his name because he is good and has provided for us even before we knew what our provisions needed to be. Isn't that a mighty God that we serve that can speak a word in the past and that word is yet relevant in today's time? Who would have thought that the words that David spoke as he was inspired by the Holy Ghost would have so much more the meaning for us in a time where we're practicing social distancing? Now, the word of God also says in Psalms 1 and 17, praise the Lord, all ye nations, and praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. 
we glorify the Lord for everything that he's done for us. We praise the Lord for everything that's gone right in our lives. And we praise the Lord and give him praise and then exalt his name for everything that goes wrong. Like our pastor says, no, we don't want things to go wrong and we don't want things to be awry and disconfigured and misconstrued. But yet we have learned to praise God and magnify him because he is in control of all and he's Lord of all. And therefore, when we're in our darkest times, we can yet give God the praise. Jesus said, the Father is looking for worshipers, true worshipers, to worship him in spirit and in truth. The question is, can you praise God when things go wrong? Can you exalt his names when it didn't work out right? Can you make glad noise and can you lift up a joyful noise to God when your plan did not work out. Praise God. God is looking for worships that's more than fair feathered worshipers, but God is looking for hardened soldiers. Praise the Lord that will prove him now herewith. Praise the Lord that God is good. Praise the Lord that he is merciful, that he has never lost a battle, that he is a redeemer and that he is a keeper of his word. Praise the Lord, because when we are weak, God makes us strong. Praise the Lord, and when we're low in our strength, God gives us his own. Now, here is another good time where that we can lift up our hands in our homes and shout with the voice of triumph because God has given us the victory again. Praise the Lord, and now would you bow your head with me in prayer? Praise the Lord as we come before the Lord and invoke his presence upon this service. Father God, praise the Lord. We pray this morning that you unstop the deaf spiritual ears so that all under the sound of my voice can receive by faith the word of the Lord. Holy Spirit, while our ears are open, speak to us the mind of God and let your power fall on us right now. Fill us with your spirit power and break every chain. Let your people be free and proclaim that Jesus is Lord and King. Praise the Lord for the power of Jesus Christ. Now today, praise the Lord, I would like to begin by asking you a rhetorical question. And that question today is if you knew that success was a certainty, what would you attempt to do? How would you obtain it? In other words, what would you do, church, if you knew that you could not fail? What would your next step be? Praise God for his word. Praise God for his power. What would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? We'll revisit that in a moment. Today's message title, Praise the Lord, is a take upon messages that we had heard before. And it, it goes something like this. Take your knee off... Well, no, not exactly. Uh, the, the, the message title today goes something like this, uh, up riding the ark, or, or better yet, let's put those two together, and, and the message title goes something like this, is, take your hands off God's ark. And we'll come and revisit that and make that plain in just a moment. But for right now, let's go to our message text, which comes from 2 Samuel 6, verse 6, chapter, and the third verse. And then we'll skip to the 6th through the 11th verse in the King James Version. And it reads, And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzziah and Aho, the sons of Abinadad, drove the cart. And they came to Nacon's threshing floor, 
Uzzi put forth his hand on the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzi, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And here it is. David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah and called the name of the place Perizua to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come unto me? So that David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city, but David carried it aside into the house of Obedidim, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obedidim for three months. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. From a historical context, the catalyst that set these events into motion began with a plague. Like the coronavirus and the social unrest over the death of George Floyd, Floyd has caused many Americans to contemplate the character and the direction of our, of our nation, so too did the epidemic cause the Philistines to reconsider their disposition with God and his people. It turned out that for them, holding on to the Ark of the Covenant of God while not in relation with him proved to be problematic and more of a liability than they realized. However, isn't it typical that the Philistine and likewise us as well find renewed motivation to catch the vision when our rears are in jeopardy and in distress. Praise the Lord. We know that can draw from our own experiences in our childhood and, and say and remember that how that with our siblings, if something went down, we would say, who daddy is going to get you or who mama is going to get you. You knew that there were some repercussions for doing wrong because the authority of the house and of your life would make certain that there was some corrections going on. And isn't it, praise the Lord, curious on how that when our rears, praise the Lord, are, praise the Lord, subject to correction, praise the Lord, we find a way where that we can grasp a revelation. But you ought to know that that ought not need to be, praise the Lord, an epidemic or an outbreak in order for us to understand what God is saying to the church. Praise the Lord, you don't have to get hemorrhoids as the Palestinians did in order to know that God is speaking to his people and God is moving in the midst of his people. There are more easier ways to come in contact with the power and the glory of the grace of God other than through disobedience and discounting the power of God. And so then the word tells us that it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Well, you can ask David about that very thing because the Bible says that he had an issue with what God has done. More specifically, the Bible tells us that David, praise the Lord, from that day was afraid of the Lord that day. Not only was David afraid of the Lord that day, David had an issue with what God had done. David had an issue with what, how God had did it. When David had did everything he knew to do to get that ark back 
to Jerusalem, he ran into an issue that he couldn't reconcile what he was doing and the move of God in that moment. And so David found himself with an attitude that was contrary to what God was doing for his people and for his reign. And I would submit to you that at that particular point, that David's own thoughts frightened him because they put him in variance with the Father. And how many times, praise the Lord, that we have found ourselves on the receiving end of correction from God. Praise the Lord, and I'm a witness, praise the Lord, that it's not, praise God, a fun thing. Praise God, it's not, praise the Lord, a time that you feel like rejoicing when, praise the Lord, you are being corrected by God. For the Bible says that those that God chastened, that he loved them. Praise the Lord. And he reminds us of that so that we know that when we're under the correction of God, God is yet stretching out his hand and loving us through the correction and calling us to fall in line and in order with his word. Praise the Lord for Jesus. So David had an issue. And David was in odds with the process God had prescribed in order to handle the ark. To the point that he had to shut himself down. Not only did he shut himself down, he shut the whole process down, and the Bible says that he shut it down for three months. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, praise the Lord, Jonah. Jonah had an issue when he was shut down for three days, but David's issue cut so dear to the heart and to the core of his aspirations that he did not know what to do did not know which step to take, did not know which road to take until he summed up the point that it was better to leave this thing alone because the, the Lord is not anybody to play and mess with. Isn't that right this morning? And so the ark had been in Abidad's house, and it was there for three months. And in that particular time, there was no word from the Lord regarding how to handle this issue. Well, let me correct that. There was word from the Lord on how to handle this issue, but the word from and the directions from the Lord were not looked up and followed by those that was handling and looking to see the blessings of God. Now, for us, what does that mean for us? Is that if we find ourselves in the position where we're chastened by God and God is correcting us, then it would behoove us to see in God's word, how do we get things right with God? And so finally, unlike Jonah three days, David three and three months decided to look into the word of God and figure out how to handle this situation. Is there anybody out there today that needs the word of God to show you how to handle that situation? There are situations in our home that needs to be handled by the way that God prescribes it. There are situations in our marriages that needs to be addressed the way God describe, prescribes for it to be addressed. There are situations on our jobs that God has scripted a way and a function to resolve that issue. There are situations in our hearts and in our minds where God has scripted the way that we ought to speak, the way that we ought to think, the behavior that we ought to produce. Praise the Lord, the temperament that we ought to have. God in his word 
through his son had provided for all of our needs to live justly and humbly before his presence. Didn't he do it? Praise God on Calvary. And so David discovered that what he had to do, praise the Lord, is different than what he had did before. Because what he did before was to follow the lead of the Philistines and he put the ark of God on a new cart. This is not the time for using a new cart. The new cart is metaphoric for using things that are not of God to solve the things that are of God. Here is the justification of the situation here. It makes no sense to attempt to do the things God does and receive the thing that God gives when you don't do what God says to do. How can you be like God and not walk like God? How can you stand with the strength of God and not stand in his presence? How can you speak like God and not speak his word? Praise him for his goodness. So then the new cart is what the Israelites copied from the Philistines as they moved the cart from Philistine into, praise the Lord, the wilderness. I would like for you to know that they had an issue. They had an issue, the Philistines, is that when they got that plague, the only thing that they were thinking in their minds would get this thing right and get rid of this issue so that they can have peace with God and his people. And the Bible tells us that when they release that ark, they also release gifts and an offering to Israel, God's people. And so then, this is a lesson for us today that when we are approaching the issues of our lives and the things and the hurdles and the barricades that we're attempting to overcome, we overcome them with God's word. We overcome them with God's power. We overcome them by doing the things that God has prescribed for us to do, no matter how hard they are. Praise the Lord. I'm kind of wondering how much time I have left, but let me see if I can handle this before I have to go. The Ark of the Covenant, from the point that it was released, had to travel seven miles to Jerusalem. When David got a hold to the Ark at the seven-mile point, he he used the idea that the Philistines had not consulting the word of God. Well, it made a lot of sense to use a cart to drive the ark because of the terrain that they had to traverse. They did not have a pickup truck to lift the ark and get it to Jerusalem. That ark had to be carried either by a cart or either by hand. And it made a lot more sense to put the ark of God in a cart and drive it to Jerusalem. And so then, that's where the children of God found themselves in variance with God because they took the holy things of God and handling it that in a way that was not prescribed by God's word. What are you handling today in your home that is not prescribed by God, in a way that isn't prescribed by God? What thoughts do you have in your mind that you are not handling in the way that God prescribed in his word? He said in his word, praise the Lord, to think upon these things. He said to think upon, meditate on his word day and night, sing spiritual songs and hymns with spiritual singing. Praise the Lord. And, and God, praise the Lord, will gird you with his power with the loins of your mind. Praise the Lord, my time is running out. I got to move on. Praise the Lord. Now, the old way was a hard way. 
they had to go over hills and they had to go over into valleys, just like in the Texas Hill Country. The way that God prescribed to move the ark was through being bared by the priests, which means they had to carry it. They had to carry the ark, and according to the words of God, every six steps they had to stop and make a sacrifice. So can you imagine the meaning of and, and the the inspiration and the joy that David felt when he saw on that day the Ark of the Covenant coming into the courts of the Lord. Why? Because it wasn't just a day. Can you imagine traveling five miles, six steps at a time, and making a sacrifice? And even that applies today, that God's way of doing things might not make sense to ourselves. But when we follow the precepts of God, we come out winners every time. The question is, if you knew, praise God, that you could not fail, what would you do? What would your next step be? What issues would you conquer? What territory would you redeem if you understood that you could not fail when you do things the way God prescribes them to be done yeah it might take a little bit longer yes it might look crazy to the other people in the world they would say just get a pickup truck but no God said carry it bear it live it breathe it yeah, it might look strange and funny to walk around, praise the Lord, Jericho, blowing your horns. But if we do what thus said the Lord, we are guaranteed victory every time. There's a song that we sing that says, victory is mine, praise the Lord, if we hold our peace, stand on God's word, and let him fight our battles, victory is ours. We can win in our marriages. We can win on the job. We can win in the street. We can win in op optional political environments. We can win, praise the Lord, when the odds are stacked against us. We can win against a giant, just like David did. God has given us the victory. God has prescribed a way to access his power and his grace. That is through his son, Jesus Christ, who is the only way and the only wise God, our Savior. God has made a way for us out of no way. And if we can hold on to God's hand, even when we praise the Lord, don't know which way to turn, when we can't resolve the, the, the things that we thought was right in our own minds, we know that God is able to bring us out. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we're praying. Father God, we know today that all power is in your hands. We know that you promised us the victory. Even though we might lose a battle, victory is ultimately ours. And it's ours because we believe and we follow through with obedience to the word of God. Now, Father, for everyone in the sound of my voice, we pray that there, if there be anyone that had not accepted you, that has not accepted your son and the pardoning of their sins, that right now you lift your hand and say, Lord, forgive me of every wrong. Lord, forgive me of my heart. Wash me until I'm clean. Purge me with hyssop and turn my black heart white. In the mighty name of Jesus, redeem me with your power and fill me with your spirit. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. And the church says, amen. Wasn't that a powerful dynamo word from the Lord? What a word, what a word, what a word. Woo. And if you pray the prayer of repentance along with Elder Gonzalez, we would like to hear from you. But first of all, I'd like to thank you for making that choice to allow Jesus to come into your life. We are, we, are, we are new friends right now. You've got a family of believers that are here to support you. You can reach us by calling 
323-5263 to share your testimony and, re and get prayer if, if you need so. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can do so by following the directions on the screen through Givelify or the app. But for now, until next time, we'd like to let you know that we love you, we care about you, we're praying for you, and please be encouraged. Thank you.